Hi, welcome back to Not So Obvious Watches. I'm Pete McConville, and today I wanna to talk about my deal breakers, the things that truly stop me buying a watch. These aren't things that leave me a little miffed. These aren't things that just annoy me. These aren't pet peeves. These are things which truly stop me moving forward and adding a watch to my collection. Before I go on, something I need to point out, these are not things that make a watch bad. Well, except in one or two cases. These are just things that stop me buying a watch. Um, if you're interested in that, I'll see you on the other side of the intro. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm gonna start with something super obvious that every watch YouTuber pretty much says. I'm sure there's some who actually do buy fakes, but maybe they don't talk about it. Anyway, so the first things first, I won't buy a fake watch. Really simple, fake watch equals fake person. Um, for me, more than anything else, were I to buy and wear a fake watch, I would think less of myself. I would think less of who I was. And I'm not gonna do that. So therefore I'm not gonna wear or buy a fake watch. Okay, so as I said, that idea of just saying no fakes is pretty common. So not really telling you anything new. But my next deal breaker, deal breaker number two, is only a slight step sideways from that. And that is I won't buy a substitute watch. I will not buy a watch that is a stand-in for the watch I really truly want. Um, essentially, the, the, the most obvious example of that would be the homage watch, the knockoff watch. So there's not going to be any Paganis or Steinharts in my collection. But it's broader than that too. It can also mean that I'm not going to buy the material I don't want. If I want it in steel, I want it in steel. The fact that I can get a two-tone perhaps is here nor there. If I want the blue dial, I'm getting the blue dial. And perhaps most common of all, I am never buying the value option. Um, that What I mean by that is if I want a watch, I can either afford to buy that watch or I can't. If I can afford to buy that watch and that's the one I want, then that is the one I buy. I never look at a watch and say, that's the one I want and I can afford it, but I will buy something else because it's better value. I will never substitute a cheaper watch for the one I can actually afford. Um, so essentially, substituting for me is all about settling, is all about giving up what you really want. I'd rather not have it than have a watered down, diluted version of it. So that's, yeah, I will not buy, deal breaker number two, I will not buy a substitute for the watch I really want. I either get the watch I want or I don't, except no substitutes. Okay, so deal breaker number three, I will not buy a watch that makes me work or worry. For me, watches are pure luxury and luxury is all about ease and comfort it's enjoyment it's fun it's pleasure anything that makes me work or worry if i have to worry about resale if i have to worry about security or storage or can i wear this here then that watch is no longer a luxury it's a burden it's it's a load i need to carry it's work it is not luxury it is not something I want. Now, quickly about what is the what constitutes work, hunting and waiting is not work. So I spent three years trying to find my Alpina C-Strong 10. That is not work. I loved every minute of it. That was play, that was pleasure, that was fun. Kissing someone's ass to have them sell you a watch, that is a level of emotional labor that I will never do. And if I did go through that process, I would find myself hating the watch that I ended up having to, that I got after that process. 
Okay, so the previous three things have all been fairly broad and sort of philosophical. The next two are much more about watches. I don't want anything, and this, this is actually just a slight step sideways from my last point about not wanting work or worry. I don't want anything with really difficult complications. And you can boil that down to pr primarily anything with a striking complication or an astronomical complication. So perpetual calendars, annual calendars, minute repeaters, alarms, all of those things, I appreciate them horologically. I appreciate the craft and, and the work. And if other people want to buy those watches, that's fantastic. You know, I think that, and I can certainly see them from afar and appreciate them, but I'm never going to buy them because you have to worry about them all the time. Are you going to break them? How often you have to service them? Things like perpetual calendars. Are you even going to, can you afford to let it run down? It's got to be in a winder, blah, blah, blah. There's, um, every hobby I've ever done um, has to have one thing, and that is what I'll call a positive fun to faff factor. There's got to be more fun than there is faffing about in the just trying to have fun. And that's why I did motocross, sorry, autocross and, and um, auto motor car type events when I was doing cars, but I would never do something like drag racing. Um, that's why I would do scuba diving because it was a lot of fun and not too much faffing about, but I never followed through and kept skydiving because there the amount of faff to fun was just out of control. And in watches that, you know, those high complications, those astronomic, astronomical and striking complications, definitely way too much faff, not enough fun, at least for me. And this last point, for anyone who's watched any of my videos, you've surely seen this coming. I will not own a watch with a Cyclops. I hate them. I detest them. They destroy, they suck the joy out of any watch I look at. Um, I get other people have their little predilections and seem to enjoy them. Not me. I think they are a horrible pustule, a crystal carbuncle. I just won't own a watch with them. It's really that simple. Anyway, so they're my five deal breakers. They're the things that will stop me buying a watch. What about you? What are the things that you, do you have any things that say, if a watch has this character, I'm not buying it. Let me know in the comments below. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches, and I'll see you later. Bye.